Okay, now the bigger issue as the reason why I came all the way this way from Lahaina was this bill. I testified on behalf of this bill many times, and I'm hoping that this council really seriously looks into accepting this um, bill 154. And why I say that, because I'm in the state of Hawaii, Stark Preservation recognized me as a lineal descendant to Lahaina by way of two values, Kahoma and Kaua'ula. If the intent of this bill, 154, is supposed to help the county in identifying hot spots by way of a cultural overlay, then I think that's the route we gotta go because many times I've been involved in, in a lot of commission with the cultural resources, uh, state of Stark um, Preservation with the Barrow Council. I served eight years and I also served another nine years with the Native Hawaiian Stark Preservation Council and advisory to the Board of Trustees, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. So again, I am here to ask the council to support Bill 154, CD1, FD1, for an ordinance amending titles 2, 16, 18, 19, and 20, Maui County Code to establish cultural overlay map to culturally sensitive designations. In Lahaina, there are a lot of ir irreparable damages that have been done already and still unresolved, especially buying into lands that already had identified barrels, but no direction or clue as pertaining to where to go to. And if we had this overlay years ago, then we would have cut to the chase by addressing those issues before those barrels was heavily impacted and desecrated. So again, um, <clears throat> if a few of you think this 154 would not help with the protection and preservation of historic properties and the old way of doing business is enough. Do any of you all oh, barrel sites and historic preservation that will be impacted then? Somebody got to hold this body accountable. So the reason why 154 was put out there was to mediate and eliminate the fear of going into hot spots and sensitive areas we call kipuka of sacred burial grounds. Any place that you can find burial, especially in Lahaina, that area is abundant. So again, I mahalo everyone for allowing me to testify. It's been a journey today. I haven't been back ever since COVID started, but I'm glad I came to witness um, the ceremony this morning. is very touching to me. So mahalo no kako, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we may have questions. No questions. Thank you very much. Thank next, you. Our next testifier is Bruce Uu, followed by Scott. Aloha, everyone. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. Aloha. Uh, my name is Bruce Uu, uh, lifelong resident of Maui, uh, Hawaiian. Uh, Carpenter by trade, now working for the Hawaii Regional Council of Carpenters. First, uh, I'd like to go on by saying thank you, Council Member uh, King. King, sorry, lost my trip. Long time we no testify live, right? Thank you for all your service. In fact, thank you guys all for your service. You guys put yourself up there, you know, it's a whole different level. And, uh, so mahalo for, for what you guys do and continue to do, and thank you for serving your term. Uh, and also, I support the hospitals. It's a good day. Everybody's supporting one thing. So jump in on that bandwagon because it's much needed, much overdue. I do support the hospital. Uh, I'm testifying on Bill 154. I just read it last night. So uh, uh, I not completely understood it. Again, as I write, it might be me, not not anybody who the author. But And I was just run, the thoughts was running through me. I, I thought to myself, there's a lot of potential there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and at the same time, thinking there's some redundancies that I might see or not see. Again, I'm not an expert, but definitely needs more clarity for myself in reading. And I always thought to myself that barriers are subsurface, meaning nobody knows where it is. It's subsurface. It's an educated guess, but nonetheless still a guess. Protect, protection of the boundaries. Where do we draw the line when it's subsurface, for example? I remember dealing with Maui Lani, and it's brought up that... Uh, in increment four, barrels were found, but not in increments one, two, and three. 
And if the overlay will be shot in, it's not that accurate for me. I, sh I, I, I uh, the instruments used at times are not accurate, and it depends what instruments you do use because you're shooting them from up above back to the earth, which is on a radius. So it's a give and take. It's not definitely accurate. So there's some stuff that needs to be working, I guess, depending on the instruments you guys use. I think language needs to be firmed up to be definite areas or documented areas. Again, to shore up some of the languages in there so we're not rooming on, running on rumors. I, it's all culture. I want to be the factual part of it where I can support it. Like I said, I think this bill has a lot of potential <clears throat> and we need factual documentation because we deserve it. I think definition of the words need to be made. Some wording is very loose. I sent some of this, uh, the bill again, to someone in ship, they're asking, hey, should give me your mana on this, because, again, I'm not an expert. I'm asking for some uh, your, uh, your, your perspective on something. They're willing to look at it a little more. I think they did review it for a certain part, but I think they're willing to do a little more. That's what I was told. And I said, but at least I'll keep it short. There's a lot of, for me in reading this, there's a lot of kuleana given to an individual. Whether or not it's the current archaeologist or someone else, and we need to be certain. Need to be, I gotta read, certain again, because it's our history that this person with this kuleana needs to be fitted what's been asked. Please correct me if I'm wrong. It is not my field. Our current archaeologist's expertise is in the plantation archaeology and not cultural archaeology. This would not be fitting in my eyes. And I say this with the utmost respect. So again, please correct me if I'm wrong. In the beginning, I said I was in Carpenter. I became a journeyman in 94. I taught at the classes at MCC, the instruments people will be using to shoot in somebody's technology. I got some certifications along the way and additional training in Las Vegas. But because I'm in within the construction industry, I will not be qualified to teach something that's not out of my realm. Okay, Bruce, can you conclude, please? Yes. So, in other words, carpentry is my only thing I know, even if I'm in the construction field. And that is within my realm where I'm comfortable. I would support this bill if it was a little cleaner. Mahalo for your time. Happy holidays. Thank you. Members, are there any questions? Member Paulton. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to clarify. Um, we had a presentation from Shipti yesterday. Did you contact them between yesterday and today? Yes, yesterday. All he's saying is they're willing to look at it. Uh, I don't know. I don't like to take their words and not use them against them, what have you. It was a rough. Someone said, yes, they look at it, but they're willing. So when I ask, hey, should I read them? Can you Emma, clarify what time? Ah. Uh, Why well, this got the response about two hours ago, to be clear. Okay, because yesterday's meeting at 1.30, they said they support the bill as written. Correct. And that was true. Susan is what I heard. I don't know. I don't know even the last name. I don't even know the person, to be honest. I have no idea. That's what I've been told. I just really in the message. McAllister. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, thank you very much. Happy holidays. You Merry too. Christmas. Happy you New too. Year. Chair, our next testifier is Scott Crawford, to be followed by Lucien Dene, who will be followed by Ivan Lay. Again, Scott Crawford, are you on the call? Okay, let's go to the next one. Lucien Dene. Aloha. Aloha. Uh, I'm here to testify on behalf of Sierra Club in support of Bill 154. Um, First of all, I'd like to address the comments about our archaeologist. Uh, although Dr. Six received her PhD specializing in plantation archaeology, she has broadly studied archaeology in all of its forms, deeply connected to the Hawaiian cultural forms, and I have participated in um, research that she's done, digs in um, various areas with Hawaiian significance with the students she had at UH. Uh, she has been hired to review many projects with Hawaiian archaeological sites. She's completely qualified to 
look at plans and determine if there are uh, Hawaiian cultural sites present. I just want to bring up a couple of things. First of all, 25 years ago, we were looking at a cultural overlay bill. This is the Haleakala Times from 1997. And the reason was given then is it all began with bulldozers tearing up Lower Main Street in Wailuku, up came bones, evidence of burial sites, and significant archaeological remains. That was a year and a half ago. This discovery led to concerns, and the concerns led to a proposed new county ordinance that will create overlay districts on the Maui map. Well, that was shot down. It was ahead of its time. Uh, Dorothy Pyle really worked very hard to convince people that this would help everybody, because having more information does help everybody. Having more information early in the process does help everybody. In fact, most of our community plans have a very, very simple implementing action. It says, in our, I'm reading from the South Maui Community Plan, but many of them have exactly the same wording. Require development projects to identify all cultural resources located within or adjacent to the project area prior to application as part of the county's development review process. Well, that's the what. This ordinance bill is the how. How do we do that? Um, we get, you know, a uniform level of review at an early part in the process so that we can avoid places that are culturally sensitive, that are known to be culturally sensitive, and we can move forward with less uncertainty into places that don't have those impacts to cultural and, and historical resources, of which probably, you know, that 70% of Maui probably doesn't going to have those impacts. But there are places on Maui that are. And we should just act in a logical manner and avoid them. So thank you for your consideration for talking with Bill today. It's had plenty of review. Uh, on a couple of other items, just personally, I'm in strong support of sending the resolution to the state about the West Maui Hospital. Enough already. This has been talked about and worked on by so many people for years and years. It's really needed. West Maui contributes so much to our tax base, and a lot of that money goes to the state. The state's in really good financial shape. This is the time to move forward and lay the groundwork to have a, a first-class medical facility on the west side of Maui so that it, it we have our infrastructure that um, matches our welcome mat. We're welcoming millions of visitors, and many of them end up in West Maui, and yet we have no place for their, um, you know, acute medical needs, except a long drive across the poly that may or may not be blocked. So thank you for your support of that. Uh, moving on to Bill, um, uh, one, uh, Bill 207, uh, the rental assistance. Uh, gee, you know, thank you guys for doing this. I serve on the Stand Up Maui board, and we just had a great presentation on, you know, the rental assistance that was available during the pandemic. It's ending, and we have a lot of people just caught between and betwixt. And uh, it's not that they're not working people. It's not that they don't have jobs. It's not that they're lazy. It's just that rents have skyrocketed and their wages have not. So if there's some stopgap measure that we can use to keep people from becoming homeless, that's really a good idea. And then the uh, Aina Kapuna bill, um, uh, 204, uh, amending that to make it even a little bit more inclusive. Um, thank you for doing that as well. It's a great Christmas gift to our community. And i just say that uh, in general support of um, uh, 22217 and 22316, um, just consolidating Bill 154 so that it's ready for prime time to pass it. Thank you all for your service and your sense of humor and sense of duty here. And uh, I hope you can make your decisions today. Godspeed. Thank you. Questions? If not, thank you very much. Our next testifier is Ivan Lay, to be followed by Randy Wagner, who will be followed by Mike Moran. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Ivan Lay, and I'll be testifying on Bill 154. I'm not a paid lobbyist. 
looking over this bill, it's too vague. There's a lot of things that aren't precise. And like, for instance, on several parts of this bill, it's stated in close proximity. If that's in 19.46.30 require, requirements for culture sensitivity designations, number one, the area contains are in close proximity. I live in Haiku and I work in Wailuku. I feel I'm in close proximity to my workplace. That's how vague proximity can be. It has to be more, it would help everybody if we have some structure and the distance of close proximity so that people have things to work off of. And also on most, on most cultural sensitive areas, uh, the project itself has to go through SHPD and they, uh, they, they need some response from them and they usually do. I've heard some stuff said about them, but they are a state organization that watches over us. And also, there's usually an archaeological expert on the project, if it is in question, to watch over the project to make sure if any potential finds are found, it will be dealt with immediately. With this, ex with these experts in place, I think it's going to hinder the project more if we put a county's archaeologist and probably overburden him with all the different projects that are out there. And uh, I feel that you have to clean this up a lot. This, it's, there's some good points on this bill, but we have to clean it up a little bit more. Again, I thank everyone for their time, and I wish everybody happy holidays. And our past council members and mayor, thank you very much for all the good work that you've done for us. And the hospital, let's get it done. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, members? If not, thank you very much. Next testifier. Our next testifier is... Randy Wagner, followed by Mike Moran, who is followed by Ruby Wagner. Aloha, I'm Randy Wagner, and I'd like to testify on two items. Um, I wasn't planning on testifying on Bill 154. However, I sit on the Cultural Resource Commission as an architect, and I can tell you we could really use that information. There are many times, um, even with archaeologists on the Commission that we need more information and the county archaeologist is very um, knowledgeable. I think she would be a good person in this role. However, I think developers would be well served by having some background information prior to embarking on projects because we see projects that are very advanced and they're in the wrong place for lack of knowledge. Well, that's my opinion about that. Um, I also want to th thank you for the ceremony this morning and thank um, especially Councilmember King for all the environmental work that she's done. And what I'm going to talk about today mostly is CR 139, which is the changes to the parking lot bill. As an architect and a planner, this is important to me. It's some um, boards to help explain help explain this, um, climate change and heat islands. Heat islands are urban areas that get hot because there's so much asphalt. And what happens, this is an example of a heat island. And the rural areas around the urban areas are much cooler. Um, heat islands cause increased levels of carbon pollution. They cause hotter temperatures due to the pollution and less evaporation. They have higher levels, they cause higher levels of energy consumption to combat those problems. And extreme storms, including flooding and the stuff we've witnessed, can be helped by removing the heat island effects. So we have a bill currently, a parking lot bill that I'm familiar with because I'm an architect, that requires one tree for every parking place. However, it doesn't say any more than that. It doesn't say you have to allow the tree to grow. It doesn't say you have to allow it to have a canopy to provide shade. So what we're asking with this resolution is to require that, require the trees that are required to be allowed to grow. Um, what would happen is it would remove carbon from the atmosphere. Tree leaves are the best filter known, the most efficient filter to remove carbon from the atmosphere and to give us more oxygen. Um, it would reduce temperatures. Everybody knows that when you're in the shade, it's so much cooler, especially in Hawaii. There's no need for air conditioning when you have shade. 
Um, it would reduce energy needs. It would help stabilize weather patterns by increasing cloud cover and just the extreme heat and the extreme dryness exacerbates the climate problems. And the um, extra benefits are increased retail activity from areas that have shaded parking lots. I mean, you can look at parking lots now and see people are trying to find the shade. They'll walk farther if there's shade. Um, there's increased property values. Homes and buildings that have shade and trees are worth more. And there's more beautiful and healthy environments. And I want to just now show you some examples here on Maui. <laughs> so you can see, I don't know if you can see, I gave you all this testimony in your packets. But these are trees that are big trees. I mean, look at this tree right here. It's a big tree. And it's completely chopped. Randy, can you conclude your testimony? Yeah, this is going to end really quickly. This is a parking lot with no trees. And this is a parking lot with trees. It meets the code, but there's no shade in the entire parking lot. And these are parking lots on Maui that actually live up to what I'm suggesting. So this bill is a no-brainer, I think. It's the low-hanging fruit for climate. And I just really appreciate Kelly for bringing it to council. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Our next testifier is Foster Ampong, to be followed by Vernon Kalani Ko, who will be followed by Kaniloa Kamonu. Aloha. Good afternoon, uh, Council Member Lee and Council Members. Um, mahalo for this opportunity. Um, I'm testifying um, on, on Bill 154. Though I support the concept of a cultural overlay map, I oppose this uh, bill and the amendments um, in its current form for the following reasons. One, the language in this amendment is not inclusive. Family relatives, living descendants of the original awardees who customarily have their family's oral history and generational knowledge to the Land Commission Award for review and comment are not included in section 1946-020-C4. The second reason is barrels are subsurface, as testifier Bruce Uu pointed out. Um, another point is how accurate is this cultural overlay map? Um, the source of the data collected. Um, um, often, you know, you'll, you'll find at the barrel council meetings when um, the public um, submits descendancy applications, um, they're applying for recognition either to a lineal descendant to the Ivi Kupuna, not the geography, or as a cultural descendant to an ancestor that comes from the Ahupua'a that the Ivi Kupuna, uh, which was it's inadvertently discovered. And so th there's two very distinct differences. And, and this is covered on the Hawaii Administrative Rules um, 13335. And so although a cultural overlay map, like I said, I support that concept. This bill doesn't do enough. The language is insufficient. It lacks clarity and specific specificity. And um, barrels, as testifier who pointed out, are subsurface. And so another concern that uh, I want to point out is in this overlay map is the intent to exactly identify the location of family burials and who will have access to this information because a lot of the concerns that we have is that we don't want our family disturbed by the public you know we're afraid that somebody's going to come along and 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 through this overlay map they're going to know where my tutu is buried like in lahaina and waehu and, and our whole point is we want them just to be left alone um I actually have a lot more I want to say, but, you know, um, I'll end here. And if council members have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Foster. Any questions, members? Uh, Member Paulton, Member Kama, Vice Chair Rollins-Fernandez. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, just wanted to clarify, was it 19.46.020C4 that you referenced? Hold on, let me look at my notes. 1946.020, section C, number four. Okay, and then I, I wanted to clarify, is that not addressed in 19.46.030? when it says instead of documented known burial site and that would include um the the things that you listed as a concern for the section before it um okay if you look at hrs 35 uh, excuse oh, me sorry it was clarifying yes or no no um, yes no no uh council member tomorrow can you repeat your question again um, I thought that the concerns you addressed in 19.46.020C4 were addressed in the following section where it said, sorry, my time is up. The 19.46.030, uh, where it says known burial instead of documented, because that would cover the family's um, knowledge. I'm specifically talking histories. about the, the lineal descendants who would have that, that oral history and that generational knowledge. All right. Any other questions, Member Vice, oh, Member Kama? Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Foster, for being here. I do want to have a conversation with you at some time. So could you leave your name and number with our uh, staff and I can contact you later? Ikino, Ikino, mahalo. Maika Ino, thank you, mahalo. Third question, Vice Chair Rollins Fernandez. Mahalo, Chair. Aloha, Mr. Ampong. Mahalo for your testimony today. Um, you, one of your concerns uh, was regarding the production of uh, Ivi Kupuna family, Ivi. So um, we heard testimony earlier on uh, the word proximity. Um, and the purpose of that was to keep that information protected. So by having the word proximity um, would keep that section, keep, keep it vague enough that uh, people wouldn't know where the um, EV are located specifically. And then in the presentation that we received yesterday, uh, we were informed by Shipti and Dr. Six uh, that that um, EV Kupuna information is something that's proprietary, so it, it is protected. It's not a GIS layer that would be available to the public. Yeah, the question was regarding proximity, if that does, uh, if that addresses his concern about the protection of uh, family EV. Um, um, Foster. Foster? Foster? Yes. 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 Okay, thank you. Mahalo, Mr. Ampang. Okay, Mahalo, members, Jack. okay, you know, the idea is to ask for clarification, okay, not give it to the extent possible. All right, any other questions? If not, next testifier. Our next testifier is Vernon Kalanico, followed by Kaniloa Kamaunu, followed by Trinit Furtado. Aloha, I'm, I'm testifying on Bill 154. Um, even for myself, you know, I read this last night and yeah, I got to read them over and over to, to, uh, understand it better. But, um, uh, yeah, I just going to call a couple things that stand out for me, you know, um, so the principal archeologist, I assume it's going to be af after hearing the pre previous testifiers, the Maui County archeologist. So maybe just put the Maui County archeologist in there then rather than just the principal archeologist. Um, being so, that's probably going to be the, ar the principal archaeologist. I would like to see more safeguards, like monitor the monitor, monitor. You know, more for accuracy and where where this information is coming from, the data for the cultural overlay. Um, the Ahumoku Council, which Ahumoku Council are we talking about? Individual Ahumoku Councils, <clears throat> or coming under one umbrella of Ahumoku um, for Maui. In council. Which council are we talking about? Uh, the Barrow Council, 
um, it, just the Barrow Council in general, hey, you know, they cool on and just review those applications, Nino and cultural designations, and, and 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 the other one is inadvertent and previously discovered Iwi Kupuna. That's the Kuliana. So why they stay in this this uh, bill? Um, and that's about it. Um, my largest concern is where this information coming from. You know, is it coming from Oha, Aomoku, the Barrow Council? Because get plenty of Hawaiians out there, they gaslight. They're inaccurate. I, I, I mean, too, to make sure the information is accurate and credible. So if you guys pass this bill, maybe you put the ad in there, keep Kula Moko out of this, this bill. Because we don't need this bill in our Moku. Okay? And so it's a good bill. I just feel like others feel. Um, we just got to work on it. We're getting there. It's got to be more inclusive to the community, especially to those families from that Aupua and that Moku. I don't like somebody coming my Moku and then tell on Google EK story, not born and raised here. You know, so it's, it's just got to be more inclusive and welcoming. And then get plenty of people in our community. Japanese, Portuguese, Filipinos, they've been here a long time, as long as, as myself. And they get plenty of Ike, they're just not Hawaiian. So I'm looking more for, as a community, not for certain groups and entities. Mahalo. Questions, members? Member Kama, questions now. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for being here, um, Mr. Kalani Kao. So my question is, I, I, I sense that you really would like this thing because it's a good thing, but would you like to see it go back to committee to have more discussion? Uh, you know, uh, you know, I, no, I mean, I, I it, you know, it's, and I apologize. I, I just saw this last night and, and I read it and, and I wish I get more time to, to embrace it. But these are, are my, my feelings that it just needs more work uh, participation because Right now, we only get Ahamoku Council, OHA, and the Barrow Council uh, providing data to Janet Six. So, is that it? You know, is Ahamoku Council going to reach out to the people of of the, the community? Uh, no work in my community. They don't reach out. So, I kind of do my own Ahamoku action. I, I'm Ahamoku in my own way. Yeah, so... Yeah, I support it. Yeah, I, I like to see this improve. That's all. I mean, because we need it. We we need it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Member Palter. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Kalani. Call for your testimony to clarify is ship the credible in your opinion? Uh, no, <laughs> not Andrew. Um, we we working on stuff that we need to clarify with with, with projects right now that I'm involved with that. Okay, thank uh, you. Was um yes yeah. or no? And then the next question is just um, are you satisfied with the process right now that goes on when burials are uh, unearthed? Yeah, I like what what's said in place. Sure. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Anyone else? If not, thank you very much, Vernon. Thank you. We'll see you. Next testifier. Our next testifier is Kaniloa Kamaunu, followed by Janet Furtado, who is followed by Meredith Miller, Dr. Meredith Miller. Hello, Council, uh, Council Chair. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify. Kaniloa Kamaunu from YAA. Um, I'm uh, for Bill 154. Um, you know, concerns about who put this bill or who pushed for this should be the concern. It's, it's ongoing knowing what's going on with the EV and the desecration and the displacement of our EV. You know, what we're looking at is that people have been so used to 
moving EV and taking them away from their burial sites, that's become a second nature, a process that it's all right to move EV. And as long as the state says it's okay, then everybody's good with it. But it's this, the reason why this came about and why even Janet Six is order, the county archaeologist came about because the processes weren't being followed. The laws weren't being upheld. The fines that should have been allocated to those who basically desecrated were never upheld by SHPD. And so Malamaka Kanilua took it upon itself to push for the effort for an archaeologist. And along with that, we needed more, we needed an archaeologist on the county because the county didn't have an expert to look at permits. And it was uh, appalling that Mr. Downer several years ago came from this council and stated that he just signed off on permits without vetting any of the work that was being done. And so we felt as Malama Kakani Lua that to insert an archaeologist would be a key point to help the county and the developers to be able to have a better picture of what's going on. This overlay, what it's doing is also helping to take care of 6E, which SHPD fails to incorporate. It helps to show highly sensitive areas and that what it does mean is that more work is going to have to be done to assure that uh, it is a sensitive area, that it is uh, a known area of burial places. We have many discussions in many of the county commissions as well as state commissions on events that happen in areas that we were told weren't true, and yet they were. The evidence was there. And so this mill is important, and I think it's already been watered down. Many things that were supposed to be in there have been taken out. And what people don't realize, the only people that take a loss in this is the Kanaka Maori. And that's why for a lot of these people who come in to develop, they don't, they're not from here and they really don't care. And I think this overlay helps them to get a better understanding and to be more inclusive of our culture. Thank you. Thank you, Kanilua. Any questions, Member Paulton? Thank you, Chair. Um, just a yes or no question. You're saying you support Bill 154? Yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Oops. Next testifier. Mahalo. All right. Our next testifier is Trinette, uh, Trinette Furtado, followed by Dr. Meredith Miller, who will be followed by Dwight Burns. Aloha mai kako. Oh, Aloha. Trinette Furtado. Makula. Uh, mahalo o ko no keia manava. Um, mahalo for uh, sticking through it and seeing all of this through as much as you can. I'm testifying on Bill 154, establishing a cultural overlay map, which I support. I want to mahalo Councilmember Kama for providing me with my opening thought when she spoke on the recent 600 million DHHL beneficiary plan, nothing about us without us. It stuck with me. It should always be nothing about us without us. Polole, hemea nui. So here we are with a cultural overlay bill that can begin to more strongly protect the most vulnerable of us, somewhat stuck in the weeds of a system that has not been kind or representative of the little us, being more about the occupying U.S. How evident it is time and again when the owner, managing agent, realtor, or other interested party, both Kanaka and non-Kanaka, have more standing than a Kanaka who has to prove lineal descendancy or other mea so they can speak for the Ivi, the Aina, and our timeless practices. It is the idea, the belief of Aina as currency, the commodification and monetization of this place that breeds disregard for bones that developers aren't connected to, for heiau that are an annoying pile of rocks to a newly settled individual, for ceremony that many have no business with or part in, taking advantage of the current supports in a system that keeps Aina marginalized and silent, and as an extension, those whose papahanao, whose onehanao this is, from speaking out to protect it and themselves a system that is about us and operates many times without us. 
A man named Alani Apio wrote back in 2001, and I'm quoting only a portion of that very insightful mana'o for all that assume to or make decisions about and for Kanaka and Aina. Quote, the things many of you say and do amount to a thousand little cuts against us, and these cuts represent a subversive, long-standing cultural genocide against the Hawaiian people. Cultural genocide against the Hawaiian people. Nobody executes us, no one lynches us, no government enslaves our children or rapes our women, no citizenry chains us up and drags us from the backs of pickup trucks, no homicidal maniac gassing us, just a thousand little cuts to our self-esteem, self-identity, cultural pride, to our souls. Rather than obliterating the people like so many Hitlers have tried, simply obliterate the glue that binds them, culture. Just enough slices to leave blood on the scene, but no actual bodies. Nobody will come out publicly and say, screw Hawaiians, that's not politically correct. But you and I know many feel this way. It's cultural genocide in a thousand little backyard, backhanded, unofficial cuts. A slow bleeding to death through a tiny, thousand tiny cuts that no one knows how to stop and nobody will admit to doing, end quote. So how long are we willing to bleed out and make excuses and smile as we die? Nothing about us without us, pololei. Please pass this piece of legislation for us, with us, and remedy the typo of the extra must on page seven, paragraph two, under approval in the last sentence. Mahalo for all you do, and happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Okay. Somebody take note of that correction. All right. No questions. Thank you, Trinette. Aloha Chair, Aloha Council Members. My name is Jocelyn Costa. I used to come here a lot and um, due to COVID, I, I've been absent and so I feel a little nervous <laughs> standing here. But um, first off, I would like to speak on the, um, the bill for the hospital in Lahaina. I wasn't going to, but um, uh, one for one. I want you folks to um, remember Auntie Florence Makikau, December 2nd. I sat in the backyard um, in Napili putting together wreaths with her until two in the afternoon. I drove back to my home in Haiku only to find out later she had suffered a massive heart attack. By the time she reached Maui Memorial, she only had a few more moments before she expired. She was a lady of aloha and lay. I don't know too many people who never received a lay from her. Could have been of flowers, could have been of feathers. So, uh, so dedicate this to her. Thank you. Okay. So now we're going to talk about our Evie group now. I heard the word vague, and yet what we deal with right now is vague. A lot of the projects will do testing 1 to 10 percent, which gives developers 90 to 99 percent mistake. That's vague. And then they come up with the EV later on and go, inadvertent. Let's figure out what we're going to do with them, move them out of the way. I heard the, the, um, the word of unknowing, yeah, unknowing, an injury. This is not just about Ivi Kupuna. I come from the East End, North Shore to East End. I feel the attack coming. The West End and Central, I don't know. But the East End, North Shore to East End, is pushing. Every time I see a pile of gravel, I wonder if it came from our hail, if it came from one of the tombs of our Ali'i that nobody wants to talk about. Big. I don't want to have to come in front of this council 
to talk about it. We deserve better. The Sunshine Law. When they say, um, you know, what they do is they cut up the landscape. So now, even if you have a Ivi Kupuna right here on that boundary, you can't talk about them because we just drew a line there. And we only talk right here. You know that 1% to 10% that I was talking about? So there's nothing there. And the Ivi is sitting right here. Or the Heiau is right here. Or the Karsk is right here. And that's what we're dealing with now. It's not just people. It's our entire existence. Everything. So it's serious, you guys. And God bless Janet Six. Because as one haole, she's willing to stand up to do the right thing. Not just for one Hawaiian, but to do the right thing. I know her personally. I've had many conversations. I trust her. And I want to put my trust in you. I want to leave you with this thought. I'm with the United Church of Christ. And we all know what happened in Kauai Ha'o Church. We all know what happened at the Ritz-Carlton. The people were saying no more. Oh, but our people said, get. Yeah, we can do it. 900 People later, they go, well, I guess we'll talk about it. And millions of dollars later, there was an overlay there. What do you think would have happened? Mahalo. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Questions, member Tamara Paulton. Thank you, Chair. Just um, wanted to clarify um, your testifying in support of Bill 154. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. My day today is from Auntie Flo Makikau. Thank you. Next. Our next testifier is Pamela Tumpop to be followed by Lahela Aubohi. Pam, Aloha. You... <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. My apologies. Am I able to start? Yes. Uh, my apologies. Thank you, Chair, and, and happy holidays to everyone. Um, first, I want to say that we do agree, and, and the testifier just said, I do think it's important to have a cultural overlay to serve and provide guidance on historical sites countywide, and that it's a very valuable tool. Uh, but we do have a few concerns about the language in Bill 154 that we feel should be discussed further before passage. When it comes to building any additional layers that delay a process, can be a challenge, but again, looking at the cultural side is very important. But we also see that when the rules are well-defined and clear, it can help to expedite the process. Given this, we feel additional work refining the language in collaboration with the building and construction industry is needed. And we also encourage you to align the definitions in the bill with those that are used by the State Historic Preservation Division to provide consistency and clarity. Further, we are concerned the bill gives significant discretion to one sole individual, the county archaeologist. And while we understand the county archaeologist is an excellent resource and expert in the field, we feel the bill's parameters that they are meant to follow are very broad. It's not that we're questioning the individual, we just feel the parameters need to be tightened. And we feel this warrants additional discussion and more specificity. We also think a review period and deadline for the county archaeologist should be included, similar to what the Council and Planning Commission have to follow to keep the process moving forward and avoid delays. We understand that uh, Cal Chip Chase has uh, helped in this area and provided a redline version of the bill, which we have seen a copy of. In reading that version, we see many good suggestions in our mind and areas for discussion. We feel that we cannot support the bill in its current form. However, we see many improvements in the red line version that address our concerns. And if the bill were sent back to committee with additional industry experts ringing in to polish the language, we feel we could quickly have a winning solution. Mahalo for the opportunity to provide testimony today. 
Members, questions? If not, thank you, Pam. Thank you. Uh, thank next you, testifier. Aloha. Our next testifier is Lahela Iwohi, to be followed by Johanna Kamonu, who will be followed by Janet Six. Aloha, Chair. Aloha, Vice Chair and Council members. Um, and before I start, mahalo again for all your hard work that you do. We really appreciate it. I am testify or I, I am a paid lobbyist. I do need to say that. I am a paid lobbyist with the Hawaii Hotel Alliance, um, and I am testifying in opposition of 154. Um, I, as in the last, in the last two times that I've testified, and I don't want to repeat myself again, um, it, it's, this is a bill that I believe that we do need. We need a cultural overlay. I am fully supportive of that. So the intent of the of this cultural overlay is is one that we can fully get behind. What I don't want to see is I don't want to see a bill being put forward and passed and then being repealed due to some negligence of the language. We want to see something that is passed that will be able to withstand any legal challenges, that will be able to move forward as soon as possible because we need that. We need a guidance for our developers. We need a guidance for our homeowners who want to just build, you know, in, on maybe whatever acreage that they, that they have. So when it comes to Bill 154, as we've heard from prior testifiers, those in support and those uh, and those who oppose, I don't believe there is any one testifier that said this is not a good bill, this is not a good bill, and the intent is not good. I believe that everyone is on the same page that we can support a cultural overlay. We see the need for it. We don't want to run into any more trouble. We want to make sure that the Ivi Kupuna is taken care of. And so I do ask that Today, maybe you do consider, I know that we sent out um, a red line version, like how Pam Tum Pop had just mentioned, from Cal Chip Chase. Um, we did meet with a couple of council members to review it. Um, I do believe that it still captures the intent. Um, and, it, and if it is something that, um, that you'd like to continue to sit down, and I'm not sure where this will go today, um, but I do ask that you consider, you know, taking a look at that bill again, the red line version, and passing something that we can all support and passing something that will not have potential legal challenges. Because like I said, we do need the cultural overlay. So, and mahalo council member Sendency for even putting that forward. I appreciate your hard work. Members questions? Member King. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, so I just wanna make sure if you were aware that court counsel did sign off on the bill. Um, and somehow, so but you still have concerns about legal challenges? Yes, and we did meet with Corp Council as well, and we did advise them, or we, I shouldn't say advise, but we did have the discussion regarding um, regarding the issues that we do have. And, and so, did they advise you that? They did say that they would sign off, and it, it was a little challenging of a, of a conversation. Um, I do believe that they have mentioned that the red line version is something that is much cleaner and um, uh, I guess I hate using the term tighter, but a cleaner and a tighter bill that they actually agreed with. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I do understand I that. Agree yes. with both versions, yeah. Thank you. So, and I don't want to take that out of the court council's mouth. So, if they are on, if they wanted to chime in, of course, that's for them. Any other questions? If, uh, Vice Chair Rollins Fernandez. Mahalo, Chair. Aloha, Ms. Iwahi. Mahalo for your testimony. So I guess I have uh, two questions. One, uh, so you said that you don't support the bill, and then the end you thank Member Sinensi for supporting, uh, for putting in the amendment. So what no, is your not position? For, not for his amendments. I do oppose the bill as it is written currently. But I do appreciate the time that he actually took, him and his staff, Dr. Six, to actually put something together because the intent of a cultural overlay is something that we need. So I support the intent of the cultural overlay. I, I believe that this can be a there can, there can be a better bill and one that can withstand potential legal challenge. Mahalo. And um, with the Corporation Council, and I won't put words in their mouth either, but they advise us on form and legality and not policy. And we, uh, as a council, decide on policy. Understandable. And so 
many things could be legal uh, with policy decisions being left up to the council. Sorry, so that the question was, uh, do you understand that? I understand that completely, and that's exactly what they said. So that's where our, and that's where the difference is, Lee. Okay, mahalo, Ms. Ayawahi. Mahalo, Chair. Mahalo. Anyone else? If not, thank you very much. Thank you. Next testifier. Our next testi uh, testifier is Johanna Kamonu, to be followed by Janet Six. Aloha, Chair and Council Members. This uh -huh. is Johanna Kamonu. Um, I'm coming before you as a former member of the Maui Lanai Island Burial Council. I served nearly two terms. And in that time, the issue of not so much the overlay bill, but of having something, a tool like the overlay bill became a topic of conversation, especially in the last two years. Um, one of the things we realized as a council was that there are questions that are meant for the Kanaka to answer. And as a people, Kanaka have not had the opportunity to talk about these things. So we're here um, at this point now with this overlay bill. And after lots of conversations um, and questions to Janet Six and the council, uh, we realized that the overlay bill might be the best possible tool that the burial council would have in protecting EV Kupuna. So I understand that there are objections and concerns to other parties, other stakeholders in the planning process. However, this all began for one purpose, and that was for the protection of the EV Kupuna. Because too late, too often, the burial council becomes part of a process when we can't change, we can't change what's happened. Disturbance and desecration, we can't stop it. It's already happened. The overlay is an opportunity to whomever decides to do any work in the community will have a chance to look and see what's there. The whole idea is so that they won't run into obstacles or opposition while they're going through their process. The hope is that everyone will be well aware of what's going on and possibly even be able to work together better. The purpose was to protect the Ivi Kupuna. Whether construction or hotel or any other stakeholders um, are concerned about the language of this bill, um, it was never our intent to reach that far. Our intent was specific to EV. So I support the bill. We, un we were unwilling in the beginning, but we finally came around to the idea that this is probably the best thing for us. And I have to mahalo um, Tanya Gregg, who was the first to provide a map of most of Maui Lani's EV. And because of that, we became more receptive to the overlay bill. Thank you. Thank you, Johanna. <laughs> Any other questions, members? If not, thank you very much. May we have the next testifier, please? Our next testifier is Janet Six. Aloha. Aloha, Janet, you have three minutes. Okay, I just wanted to jump on, um, make a couple clarifications. Um, I heard that burials are subsurface. Um, most archeological sites are subsurface, hence the need for trenching. So I just wanna clarify that, that burials are not the only thing that are subsurface. We have technologies that allow us to find subsurface anomalies. They're not perfect, but they do work. Another clarification is the principal archeologist is the county archeologist. I think Vernon was saying that they should have the county archeologist do it. I'm one in the same. Um, my credentials are broad. I did my PhD on plantation, but I've worked in sites such as Mokula, Loi Loa, all by invitation. So I, I have worked in culturally sensitive sites alongside um, lineal and cultural descendants. All the Ahamoku councils would be involved. Um, 
close proximity is kind of a redundant word and was actually added in the red line version because proximity means close. So the close proximity that people have problems with was actually from the red line version. Um, burials would absolutely be proprietary. That would not be something that would be shared with the public. We went over this in a number of meetings, and I'm sorry that so many folks testifying today didn't have a chance to really take a good look at the bill or to discuss it with me. And in, uh, my takeaway from my meeting with uh, Lahela was a little different, but I did appreciate them meeting with me. I did talk to several of the council members and make myself available. So I just want to put out there, if anyone has any questions or clarification, of course, I support the bill. I don't think I can say that. So that's all. Thank you so much. We have a question from uh, uh, Member Uh, no, Chair, just a question for you, if we can ask uh, Ms. Six to stay on as a resource when the item comes up, just in case. Uh, Certainly, I don't think that's necessary, well, honestly. I mean, I, and I'm only asking, Chair, because um, if anybody has amendments and haven't spoken with um, um, Ms. Six, then she would be able to probably okay. uh, answer. Uh, we address. have no idea when that's going to be. But would you be willing to stay or return as a resource person? Absolutely. Any objections, members? No, no objection. objection. So ordered. Thank you. Any questions for the testifier? For clarification. If not, thank you very much. May we have the next testifier? Aloha, my kako. I'm Noelani Ahia, and I am testifying on my own behalf in my own time. I am here to testify in strong support of Bill 154. This bill, at this point in time, after two plus years of labor, putting this bill together in committee, at this time, this bill is about Kuliana. I'd like all of you council members to ask yourself, where does your Kuliana lie? Is it to the Aina, the people, especially the Kanaka Maoli, our Iwi Kupuna, and our culture? Or is it to lobbyists and corporate interest? Because up until two meetings ago, we had zero testimony in opposition of this bill. Zero. This bill is supported by every department in this county. It is signed off and vetted by Corp Council. It is lauded by SHPD. And the, co the community has been coming out testifying and working with the committee for over two years to get this bill that we have before us today as written. Susan Liebel from SHPD was here yesterday. I'm so grateful for that APT meeting. She clarified that the 6E laws are outdated and they don't do enough to protect in advance of desecration and big money problems for developers with lawsuits and projects being stopped for years at a time. And I know that's true because I'm the plaintiff in the lawsuit at Maui Lani Phase 6, which started in 2019, the lawsuit. And we're in 2022. I can almost guarantee that those developers, in hindsight, would have rather just protected that area and put it into preservation in advance rather than spend hundreds of thousand dollars on legal fees because the only people who benefit in that scenario are the attorneys for those developers. And we have some of those same attorneys who represent developers who have historically been uh, desecrators who are trying to influence this council trying to get you to change the bill after we worked so hard? Uh, can you please conclude? I will conclude. 
This bill, as written, should be passed today. And the votes of the council members today is going to tell us exactly where your kuleana lies. Please pass Bill 154 today. Mahalo. Thank you. Any questions, members? If not, thank you. May we have the next? One more? We have one more. You want to introduce them? This would be for Faye McFarland. Again, please. Faye, Mc, Faye McFarland. She said in the chat to let the um, next testifier go because she's having uh, trouble unmuting. Are there any other individuals wanting to sign up to testify? We're getting close to the last call for testimony. Mr. Dwight Burns. I'm here. First of all, let me apologize for the background noise. That's why I had to leave. I had to pick up my grandsons, grandsons and babysit. <laughs> so I apologize for that. But I testified on Bill 154, and I just wanted to let you council members know, whichever way you guys vote today, you're doing your kuleana after listening to the previous testifier. No matter what you decide, you are doing your kuleana. It's the way I see it. But, um... <clears throat> As everybody had said before, yeah, I don't like sound redundant, but there are, there are some things on this bill that could use some work and touching up. I mean, I support Shane, Sun Member Sonancy. Sorry about that, also Member Sonancy. You know, I support you bringing this forward like everybody said. Awesome job, brother. You know, our, our, our Kupuna EV has been desecrated throughout the years. I know firsthand because I work in the industry, I have done tests digging in some areas in Moilani, I have seen it. You know, and it's not like we enjoy doing that. I mean, don't get me wrong, we're not in nobody's pockets. I am in nobody's deep pockets. I don't I don't get paid from people to make my decisions and whatever decision I make. But I have seen that firsthand and as as half Hawaiian myself, believe me, it hurts when we dig that up. We're doing our job. At the end of the day we're doing our job, but it, it really does hurt. And not only me, I mean, a lot of our operating engineers, it, it does hurt us being coming from the Hawaii, our Hawaiian ancestral background and being part Hawaiian ourselves, or even full Hawaiians back in the day. There was a lot of pure-blooded Hawaiian operating engineers. And um, just to hear what some of the testifiers say about us and what we do, it hurts me to think that we don't care about our Kupuna Eevee just as much as everybody else does, because we do. We do. At the end of the day, we do. We care about our culture. We care about our heritage. I'm proud to be Hawaiian, just to let you guys know. I, sorry, I get a little emotional because that's how much it means to me. So, um, for me, I see a little things that could be touched up on the bill. I'm not just, I'm not just re repeating what everybody else had said. It's my opinion and mine's only. I have read the bill last night. Um, sorry, I never get on this sooner. But I see some things that could be worked on. I mean, again, I'm going to just kudos to you, Member Sonancy, for bringing this forward. You know, this is a touchy subject. I mean, most people would like to stay away from it. But thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. And thank you all again for all your hard work. Um, yeah, thank you guys, and sorry. Uh, Happy holidays again. Sorry I had to leave, but it was great seeing you all there when I was there. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, members? If not, thank you, Dwight. Next testifier. Our next testifier is Faye McFarland. I keep touching it, but it's not, it's not unmuting. You're mm -hmm. unmuted. Oh, sorry. 
Kalamai, uh, Ofe McFarlane Ko Inoa. I submitted individual testimony um, by writing yesterday. I'm not sure if it popped up in the record, but I'm giving organizational testimony today on behalf of the Ivi Kupuna Committee of um, Ka'ana Palimoku, as well as the Committee for Lahaina Moku um, in the Ahamoku Island Council. And to clarify, there was a question brought up earlier about what Ahamoku or which Ahamoku they mean. And um, if anybody has any questions, they are free to contact the Association of Ahamoku. Moku Island Councils to find out exactly who is the entity on Lanai or Molokai or Maui. But um, I think you all are very well aware. The DLNR is aware. Ship D is aware. Uh, all the county departments are aware. So um, I don't think that that's a, a real question. But anyway, these committees have met on the various redrafts because um, the legislation changed over a couple of years. I remember being one of the early testifiers a couple years ago talking about our concerns. Um, with concentrating too much power here or there or what happens if deadlines are not met. And I can say that um, the current drafted form, which has been um, updated even, you know, and presented as of yesterday, uh, does answer the concerns that were brought forward by cultural practitioners. So uh, I just really quickly wanted to um, offer the support based on the most recent drafts and the most recent meetings that the committees have had to review those changes um, for Ka'ana Palimoku and Lahaina Moku. You've already heard testimony from several of the Moku Po'o themselves who took the time to go down there in person. And I mahalo you all for your time. I won't spend any more um of your time today, but if anybody needs a list, a comprehensive list of all the cultural practitioners that serve on those MOCO committees, we're happy to provide that in writing at any time. Mahalo. Thank you, questions, members. If not, um, Member Sugimura. Thank you. Um, uh, I would like to ask for that list, please. And if Thank you. Submit it to the council. Did the and testifier then... hear the question? Ms. To the county McFarlane? clerk or to Miss or to Member Sugimura's office? You could send it to the uh, county clerk's office. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? We have one more testifier calling from the phone with last four digits four three three seven. Nobody's at the airport. Hello. Hello. What is your name? Can you? Oh, this is this is Dave Jorgensen. Um, actually, I'm in the airport in Honolulu, just coming back from getting tests done. I've been having a heck of a time connecting, but I just wanted to, if I can, um, briefly just make a couple comments. Um, I am. A registered lobbyist. I represent the American Resort Development Association. Uh, Dave, Dave, you don't have to say that anymore. Uh, but what items are you uh, testifying on? Bill, Bill 154. Okay. And um, we submitted written testimony. So again, I'll be very, very brief. Um, we did have concerns about Bill 154. I've read a red line version of revisions that were proposed, and those are you know, they do satisfy the concerns we had. So um, I'm hoping that that will move forward with those provisions. And I do want to express um, appreciation to everybody that worked hard on doing that, you know, including, I understand, Councilwoman Paulson and other people. And I apologize for the background noise and being out of breath when you request the airport. So um, that's all I have for now. Any questions, members? If not, thank you. Chair, the next person signed up to testify is La'akea Lo, to be followed by Jantel Lindo. Hello, my kaku. O La'akea Lo ko inoa, no kumoku hamaku a poko mai au. I saw na mahali folks for, I don't know when this format changed, but good to get off of work and still be able to um, share my out with you folks. Um, Sharing one out on Bill 154 regarding the cultural overlay, um, a few points. So I listened to um, the APT committee meeting yesterday, and I want to uh, mahalo uh, the chair of that committee, um, Sinensi, for all his work in this bill and um, 
So it was said that like the HRS, um, I think six E yeah, was written. In, go, go away from my camera. Was written in the nineties, um, and yeah, so it was written in the nineties, and so I hope um, this bill will move us into the twenty first century. Um, we all know that Shipti is overwhelmed. Um, they have every island in Hawaii to deal with. And so, I, um, you know, I think Bill 154 will help um, Maui tremendously in addressing some of the um, issues that come up um, regarding um, EV and other um, cultural um, inventories for archaeology. And so... Um, so that Shipti doesn't, or Shipti's overwhelmed, so I hope Maui County won't be, and we can um, add more archaeology positions. Um, I think it was said that Dr. Six is a unicorn, and I think we need a whole school of Okule, um, not just one unicorn, but a whole school of Okule archaeologists out here um, doing the work. Um, I think it was also said by Vice Chair um, Rawlings Fernandez that... Um, the cultural overlay could help minimize buyer's remorse for folks investing in various properties. I think that would be good too. Um, you know, folks would folks would know beforehand um, before investing um, millions or however much um, money they invest. Um, also appreciated the discussion about a proprietary layer. Um, I think there's culturally significant sites that um, not everybody should know. I think we, I'm concerned about there being like a Maui arc sites revealed, like that blue book that everybody is um, using to go to all our sites. So I think a proprietary layer is important too. Um, and then last thing on, um, I think section 14 of the bill amending um, 20.08.080 of the county code, um, talking about grading and grubbing. Um, I think like it mentions the soil and water district who reviews grading and grubbing um, projects. Um, so folks can either go through the county or go through um, the soil and water district. Um, so I think that the soil and water district folks should at least have or should have access to the same maps that um, Dr. Six and them have. I think it would save a lot of time too if even if... Um, yeah, if they just had access or if the recommendations um, from the archaeologist was made first so that they're not doing work, unnecessary work, just to find out that there's cultural significance in the area. Um, yeah, so mahalo for your folks' time. Mahalo. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Clark. Chair, the last person we have signed up to testify on agenda section O, unfinished business, is Jantel Lindo. If there's anybody else who would like to testify on any of these items, uh, please identify yourself. Uh, but for now, Jantel Lindo. Hello, Chair. Thank you for this opportunity. Hello. Disclosure was me yelling in the microphone because past six o'clock, I grow to you. Plenty of grandkids are on you. But I was leaving the door and then I heard uh, Mr. Crowley um say something that um, I just wanted to share. So I like testify on I know, uh, Bill 192 first and just say that I like commend you guys for always trying to keep up. You know, when um, he's right, the tax laws and classifications used to be easy when people were honest. And when we never have people being so creative in trying to get every break they can get. And people suffer because of that. And so because of that, we need good leaders who are looking for every way to benefit our people. And I just want to thank you for that. And I support the bill. On 154 on Molokai, for, the, for one of the, I, I just, everybody always says we're back in time. But this is one situation where I can honestly say that we were ahead of the game for so many years as we implemented cultural overlay in our community plan for the last 20 years. And, um... It has been one of the most beneficial and wonderful things just for even to um, help mitigate conflict right off the bat from things that used to be fist fighting and yelling and 1 a.m. meetings in Molokai to 
this is what the island wants. This is the way. So this is the starting point, which means we value our 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 EV, our our cultural designation, and and we want that to be known straight from the bat. So so people coming in who want to develop here now, they know that right from the start. There's no there's uh, no ifs ends or buts about it. And and I just want to commend you guys again for even taking this up. Thank you for that. And mahalo, mahalo for sticking around. Thank you. Any more questions? If not, uh, oh, she's gone already. Happy holidays. Take care of the kids. Okay, anybody else? All right. Mr. Clerk. Chair, there are currently no other individuals signed up to testify on agenda section O, unfinished business, so we'll do last call at this time. If there is anybody else who would like to testify on any of these items, please identify yourself now. I repeat, last call. The main motion as amended. Discussion, Vice Chair, I mean not Vice Chair, but the member. Maybe by now you'll be <laughs> Vice Chair. I'll Synergy. Chair. I'll chair for my uh, comments. But Chair, we've had 13 meetings on this bill. And if um, uh, people had turned, uh, tuned in yesterday at the APT committee meeting, um, you would hear Dr. Susan Liebel of the State Historic Preservation Division uh, say that this bill does not circumvent Ship D, uh, but instead enhances and facilitates their review process to speed up the process for the benefit of developers. Uh, they would have heard her say that having Dr. Six review uh, permit applications uh, is extremely important and valuable to them. And with her collaboration, they make better decisions. Uh, you also would have heard department heads such as Director Michelle McLean, uh, Director Jordan Molina, uh, Director Carla Peters, and Deputy Director Linda Bunsell explain that Dr. Six's review of projects speeds up projects, um, including affordable housing. Uh, Director Molina stated that Dr. Six's review of permits provides the right balance of facilitating projects and protecting cultural resources. Um, uh, it could never be said enough how precious our cultural, historic, and archaeological resources are to us, to our ancestors, and to future generations. And so, members, this important legislation will provide an effective layer of protection for lands designated as culturally sensitive to ensure that negative impacts to these resources are avoided and at least mitigated. And I wanted to uh, mahalo all of the staff that worked tirelessly on this bill for the last two years. Everybody who's come in and in support and for um, everyone's support. Thank you, Chair. Anyone else? Member Paulton. Thank you, Chair. Um, you know, I, I worked for over um, ab about two decades, 20 years at uh, Honokahua Bay in West Maui, where they uh, uncovered hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Iwi Kupuna, and was the um, impetus for the beginnings of the Burial Council. In the 129 years since the overthrow of the monarchy, Hawaii has lost so much of our cultural resources. Um, Moku'ula, Loko o Mokuhinia has been backfilled. Um, it's, it's not even um, recognized as the spiritual center that it is of the Hawaiian kingdom anymore. It's not recognizable. And um, There's, there's only one place in the entire world that is Hawaii, and this is Hawaii. And, um, you know, to go to any other country and desecrate the bones of their people, to go to any other country and bulldoze their churches, it wouldn't be acceptable. And, um, you know, I heard loud and clear both sides of the aisle that this doesn't go far enough that it's too vague, that it gives too much information, possibly, for people to go and know the areas where they can 
take pictures. Um, we've seen what happened to the petroglyphs just recently um, that were splattered with paint and had to be cleaned up. And so, you know, this isn't perfect. But to anyone in the construction industry that doesn't want to come across burials, this sets the framework for addressing the issues before they happen. And so, um, only time will tell that this will be better than what we currently have. I sat in on Kahuliao's legal training and they said that, you know, with all the laws that this state of Hawaii has regarding burials, they haven't done enough to protect. And they're looking at updates to their own laws as well. And, you know, I read the testimony for OHA and they've been the most critical of Shitti. And, and so, you know, this is moving along with the trends at the state of Hawaii level as well. And while it's not perfect, I think it's the best we've got right at this time. Thank you. Any more discussion? Vice Chair Rollins Fernandez. Mahalo, Chair. <clears throat> this has been a long time in um, the making, as we heard from Ms. Dene, um, this effort, they tried. 25 years ago, or over 25 years ago. Um, in our Maui, uh, sorry, Molokai Community Plan, um, you heard from our testifier, Ms. Lindo, uh, that we've been trying to uh, accomplish this. And this is history in the making. And I want to thank um, Member Sonensi and his staff, um, Ms. Young. Uh, I want to thank... Um, Ms. Noya Hia, and Dr. Six, Mr. Law, the Planning Commissions, and uh, everyone um, in the community who took the time and uh, to put their mana into this. Uh, as Member Poulton stated, um, it, it it doesn't go far enough, but this is this is a step forward, and um, this will have tremendous benefit. Uh, to everyone. Um, as we discussed in committee yesterday, um, you know, what, it, what is prevention worth to people? What is prevention of acquiring, um, you know, parcels? What is our ancestors, Aina, and what to others is just an investment? Um, but investing in a way that um, doesn't result in lawsuits uh, and, and a lot more costs and, and divisions in our community. And this is huge. And sometimes I get overwhelmed by just the magnitude of some of the, the work that this council has done. The Molokai Planning Commission unanimously supported it. Um, and, you know, Member Poulton uh, brought up uh, the lawsuit, the impetus of the burial councils and uh, EV protection laws. And um, one of the people who litigated that lawsuit was our Molokai girl, our attorney, Malia Kuragawa, when she worked at NHLC. And, you know, I, I, um, this is Kuleana. Um, yes, Kuleana is um, being in this seat and representing our constituents, our communities, our aina, our culture. Um, but who are you accountable to? And my vote is reflects who I'm accountable to. Wetlands is our culture is place based. Uh, so having wetlands be part of this makes sense because Aina is part of our culture. It's, it's a foundation of our culture. Aina is our ancestor. And um, 
Our Lahui has been through enough. One of the testifiers, Mr. Burns, he talked about how some Kanaka have to be the ones to dig up some Eevee. And we know that they get sick when they dig up our Eevee Kupuna. And they know that. One of the reasons I went to law school is to prevent harm from happening. And that's why I'm in the seat, to prevent harm from continuing to happen. And he said that it hurts his people, his workers, when they have to dig up Evie because they have to put food on the table and a roof over the head of their families. And they have to be put in that situation. And this bill will help to prevent that hurt from continuing to happen. So, It's really a privilege and responsibility as Kuleana to vote aye today. Mahalo, Chair. Anyone else? Uh, Member Sugimura. Thank you. Um, so I, I, I believe that all of us can thank Member Sinensi and the hard work that has been put into this bill and understand the value of culture overlay. I'm gonna be voting no on this bill because I believe that some of the testifiers during the public hearing process still had questions like Vernon Kalani Kal. I was surprised by his strong statements, um, but he questioned it. Dwight Burns in his testimony, I don't think he said that we ran across bone, bones and had to um, deal with it because we have to put food on our plates and roof over our heads. I think, you know, I think he was respectful um, of those situations. He's operating engineers um, with that union. Um, but he was just expressing, you know, some of the situations, I guess, that they ran into. Um, but I believe this bill needs to work maybe further in the details. Um, I listened to the meeting yesterday and one of the things that Dr. Six said, which caught, caught my attention, and one of the things that I said in um, during first reading and this, um, I'll say it again, is that it's a lot to have one person have to take this whole task on and then have the permits will have to be approved by this person. And although very capable, the person sitting in that seat now, but I think more work needs to get done and that it should go back to a greater um, discussion. And um, so I'm gonna be voting no on the bill and not because I do not respect or think we need cultural overlays, but I think because we need to look at it closer so that um, we can have this in place to protect the EV kupuna as well as the process will be sound. And, um, you know, things like um, grandfathering projects that have already um, we received their final discretionary approvals prior to the adoption of this applicable um, cultural designation. Um, things like that needs to be looked at because we're not operating, we're not living in a vacuum. So thank you, Chair, for the opportunity. Anybody else? Member Molina. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, my mahalo to Mr. Sinensi and everyone else who uh, put together this bill. And as he had mentioned, 13 plus meetings. And I thank Ms. Dene for uh, providing us the history lesson of this, uh, what roughly over 25 years ago, it was first talked about in the old Haleakala Times. And you know, the, the common thread I've been hearing with all the testimony from people on both sides of this issue is we need something like this. Granted, um, all of us with our own individual bills that we propose, it's never always perfect, um, but you have to start someplace. To me, it's a case of, if not now, when? Um, if we don't move it out, uh, take action now, then how long more will uh, the public have to wait on this? And sometimes, you know, the way I see it, it's, it's a clash of philosophies, Western philosophy versus um, Hawaiian philosophy when it comes to land. You know, 
uh, you know, Western philosophy tends to look at a, a piece of land as what it is, a commodity, something you buy and sell. Whereas, you know, the Hawaiian philosophy is very different. They look at its its life and it's not something to be um, bought and paid for, you know, and it's, a, it's an ancestral, a cultural thing that needs to be respected and, you know, there's no price you can put on that. So um, I agree, you know, it's it's not a, a perfect body of work, but it's a uh, it's something that we can start with and move forward. And, you know, certainly um, the next council can uh, look at making some uh, potential adjustments if, if called for. So I'm in favor of just let's move forward with this and um, see what happens down the road. And thanks to all. And I appreciate the uh, manao from both sides of this issue because it, it is something certainly very sensitive. Thank you, Chair. Anybody else? Member King. Thank you, Chair. Um, you know, I'm not going to repeat everything that was said, but uh, I, I do want to respect all the testimony that came in, and everybody who testified agreed that this the, the intent of this bill is good, that we need a cultural overlay. There are always going to be differences, no matter what we do, on how we do it. So we could change to the red line version. There will be other people who will come out and say, that's not good. I'm satisfied that we worked on this long enough and we had enough input and enough expertise on it. Um, all of us have had bills that have been um, a long time coming that we've worked on for months and months and sometimes years. And then people come out the last minute and say, this is the first I've heard of it. I only just got to read it. You know, we, we, can't, we can't assuage everybody who reads our bills on the last day and comes back and, you know, demands that we spend more and more time, but I, I think um, this is a matter of what's right, um, what's pono, and one of my favorite quotes I like to use a lot is um, by the, a famous um, sustainable design architect, is that regulation is a sign of failure, and if we fail to do the right thing, and if we fail to respect the land, then we have to regulate people's actions, because we're losing our land, we're losing our our biodiversity, we're losing, um, there's major impacts on our environment that we have to put a stop to because we're, a lot of people in our community are not doing the right thing. They're not respecting our natural environment. And so I'm happy to support this bill. I do think it's a long time coming. I was happy to hear from Lucien that this is something that was talked about 25 years ago because, you know, that should give us more of the strength to get it done today and not, um, not put it off another week even. Um, and I, I just wanted to say that um, I respect everybody's opinion about this bill, but it's time to move forward, and so I'm going to support it on, on the second and final reading. And I'm really, I, I think it's very auspicious that this is the last decision we're going to make on the last meeting of, the, of my last term. <laughs> um, and that you know, and I and again, thank you, Member Sinensi, and thank you everybody who worked on this bill. And I'm I'm happy to be aligned with the idea of the the uh, overlay district with the wetlands because uh, these are two very important parts of our community and our culture. And uh, and I'm now and now they're important parts of our our Maui County code. So thank you. Anybody else? If not, I'll just say that I'll be voting no on this vote because um, on this motion, <clears throat> not because I don't agree with the overlay district. I think everybody wants it. Uh, but this is supposed to be enabling legislation. And um, the criticism about this bill is that it's vague and uh, it's redundant and it needs more work. And I agree with that point of view. Mr. Clerk. Roll call. Chair, proceeding with a roll call vote on the main motion as amended. Council Member Shane Sinensi. Aye. Council Member Mike Molina. Aye. Council Member Kelly Takaya King. Aye. Council Member Gabe Johnson. Aye. Council Member Tamara Paulton. Aye. Council Member Yukile Sugimura. No. Presiding Officer Pro Tempore Tasha Kama. Excused. Council Vice Chair Kiani Rollins Fernandez. Aye. And Chair Alice L. Lee. No. Chair, there are six ayes, two noes, one excused. Motion carries. All right, members. Uh, we have come to the end of the calendar.
and and the end of the year and the end of working with two wonderful people. So any parting remarks? Um, the, the one thing I do want to get on the record before we close is a part of my opening remarks was to thank, sincerely thank, our Office of uh, County Clerk and the entire staff. Office of, yeah, big hand. And then um, the Office of uh, the Council Services. And then we have, we have to remember our executive assistants that work really hard and take a lot of abuse, let's face it, from the council members. All of the staff for your dedicated support and diligence throughout the year. So members, um, any parting remarks? Please, nothing over three sentences, okay? All right, Vice Chair Rollins Fernandez. Mahalo, Chair. I wanted to hear your remarks in its entirety. No. Why are you hold them back on us? No. Be you know why? Because my dogs are starving. My you have animals, more than one now. No, well, I have two, but and one cat. So they must be at home protesting, walking up and down the road with signs. We are hungry. We are hungry. So I have to take care of that obligation. But please. As we leave, anybody, okay, online, member Johnson, I know you're not feeling well, but do you want to say anything? Merry Christmas, or something. everybody. Bert, uh, okay, uh, thank you all. It was an honor and a pleasure to work with you folks on my first term. Uh, and I'll keep it short. I, you guys have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. Mahalo, Chair. A mahalo to you. Uh, let's see, uh, member Sugimura. Yeah, um, amazing. Here we are at our last meeting. Um, it was a very productive meeting, and and uh, I will miss working with Kelly and Mike Molina, uh, two very special people. So good luck to you in your endeavors as you move forward. And um, other members, we'll see you January 2nd. Very good. And then we'll go down the line here. Uh, Member Sinensi. Oh, I'm, no, but I'm saving the best for last. No, just... Let, uh, I'm uh, saving happy, Molina and yourself for last. Okay, Member Sinensi. Happy holidays and holy makahikiho, and we'll see you guys next year. Thank you, and you too. Member Paulton. Aloha kaliki waka, mika haoli makahikiho, kako, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Vice Chair Rollins Fernandez. Mahalo, Chair. Uh, Yep, same thing. Uh, I just want to thank my Jan, holding down a Molokai, uh, Noi, uh, Vanessa. Um, oh my goodness, there's just been, I don't care. S Sarah, uh, she, she's not really on my staff anymore, but um, she'll forever be um, part of my team. So, um, and uh, my, my BFED committee uh, staff, Leslie and AC and Remy. Everyone in OCS and everyone in the clerk's office, love you all, and lonoi kamakihiki, and uh, happy all the holidays. Mahalo, Chair. Thank you. And then um, we'll have um, Kelly go next, and then Mike Molina last. And so I'll say, I'll say uh, happy holidays to all of you. Hope you have a very happy and safe and healthy. A new year, and may God bless all of you, keep you protected. All right, Member King. Well, thank you for just an incredible day. Anybody who says this is a thankless job, we know now that they're very wrong. Um, I'm sure Mike Molina will join me in feeling very appreciated today, so thank you for that. Um, uh, I, again, I want to thank um, OCS staff and especially the care committee, um, James Forrest. It was just incredible, and Leslie Milner, Jocelyn. And, um, I, I, I've had some pretty good folks in the past who are off island now, and I can't remember everybody. But my my office staff, and uh, and then the uh, of course the county clerk's office, um, and you know just um, especially want to appreciate my colleagues and thank you for the kind words today for um, 
helping it for just getting so much done. I mean, I can't even, I, don't, I think that we've done more in the past year than many councils have done in 10 years, probably the amount of legislation that we pass. It's almost frightening to think about it. Um, but, you know, I want to wish everybody happy holidays and relaxation. Uh, I thought the last couple months would be much easier and slowing down, but right up to the last meeting, we've been going breakneck speed. And so it's very gratifying. I think I'm going to feel um, very rested over the holidays, being able to look back and see all that um, this council has done. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Member King. Mr. Molina. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. And, you know, um, thank you for recognizing the uh, clerk's office and office of elections, because I, I should have mentioned that today in my thank yous. And I want to echo that, and especially uh, Lauren and Joyce, who spent many days and nights with us. And I know they enjoy every moment of it, you know. <laughs> you know? And also our clerks, uh, you know, uh, Kathy and James, thank you. Thank you so much for all you do. And um, one other entity we didn't recognize, Akaku. They're the ones that put us on TV and make us look good. Chivo and J. April and all the gang. Mahalo to all you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I tell you what, to everybody who gave us such uh, touching comments today, it was just, there's no words uh, to say. It was just so touching. And I predict, Madam Chair, uh, when the day comes when you guys will be departing from this council, um, I think the, ceremony, the, the record that was sent for ceremonial resolutions will be broken. So the record stands at three hours that someday you guys will be will break that record for ceremonial resolutions with the amount of people that will come out and testify and say wonderful things about your service as well. So uh, with that said, everybody have a very safe uh, holiday season. And um, thank you. Thank you again for all of the recognition and uh, chicken skin moment. Hello, everyone. Thank you, everyone. This meeting is adjourned. Okay, Mike, no Good coming back just so you can have recording another Recording has stopped. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to leave now. I come back. Just <laughs> have a good one, everybody. Care. Night. Feed that dog and a cat now. <laughs>